am really, really impressed with Marvel Animation's presentation at Comic-Con. Their first presentation, you know, MCU Animation. This is just really, really impressive. We're eating good with this, with this information. And the, it, it is more Disney Plus content, and we're talking about potential oversaturation right now for the MCU. And then also, when you look at something like The Boys versus Invincible, although we love both those shows, you know, will the animate the will the MCU animation be able to be grander than the the live action movies? You know, right now we're trying to justify the live action movies, have them carve out their own space, because right now the the Disney Plus shows that they they have very big budgets, but they also have more time to tell their story. So I think the movies are suffering a little bit in comparison. Uh, so, but if all the the big action and set pieces also can show up in animation, again, what does that leave for the movies? But that's Kevin Feige's problem. We're gonna love these shows. This is great. So this is kind of like an appetizer to tomorrow's Marvel Studios panel, which everyone is very excited about. Although remember, as I was the first to report, uh, they are saving their big announcements for D23. Uh, but anyway, Marvel Animation had its own panel today, and right now it, it's dominating. As of my writing this, um, writing my notes out for this video, it was dominating the top 10 on Twitter. Uh, a slew of exciting announcements. Forget an appetizer. This is a meal in and of itself. So as we've discussed before, DC has been getting their butt handed to them on the most part with movies and live action television, but they've always, you know, dominated Marvel at least when it comes to animation and video games. Well, it looks like the, their, la their, their, their last stronghold is video games because Marvel, I think, as I said when I covered What If, I think Marvel is, you know, surpassing them in animation, unfortunately. Uh, and we'll see if Marvel can get a handle on video games. Uh, they're, they, they're not even really trying in that space. And DC's like, don't try. <laughs> All right, so today we're talking animation, though, not video games. And the reveals of the teams and suits for X-Men 97, Marvel Zombies, and uh, Spider-Man Freshman Year... I'm particularly excited about Marvel Zombies. But anyway, it's super fun to see these lineups. And it reminds me of when they would, you know, reveal new team team lineups uh, for comic books. You know, new titles. They'd be like, look who's going to be in this group. And you're like, ooh. You know, particularly that's something that Marvel Comics does very well. But not lately. I think, like, recently they had a pretty good, you know, like, West Coast Avengers thing they announced. But they do it far and few between these days. But it's always fun. And I'm, I really get a hoot out of these reveals. Uh, so let's go over these shows, plus details uh, for What If Season 2, and it's really an embarrassment of riches on Marvel Animation's behalf, or I guess MCU Animation is what we should be calling it. Although to be fair, Harley Quinn is very, very good. Uh, my review will actually go up this coming week, uh, the same week that Season 3 debuts. That's on HBO Max now. And then also, someday, this Matt Reeves, J.J. Abrams, and Bruce Timm show is supposed to come on HBO Max as well. But again, it's all Batman. It's all Batman. Uh, where I think the MCU stuff's a little more expansive. Although DC is interesting because it has different corners, whereas I think Marvel is just all blending together. Marvel's supposed to have different corners, but it's not really working out, which is what makes me nervous about the X-Men. They're supposed to have their own corner here as X-Men 97 isn't in the MCU. So, well, we'll see how it works out. As I've said many times, and you're gonna hear it many more, X-Men have never really blended with the rest of the Marvel Universe and the comics. So I'm very worried about how it's going to work in the MCM. All right, so we're going to go through these in order of release. And that's the big downside here. This stuff is far away. All right, so first up, early 2023, What If Season 2? And that's coming fast because, of course, some of the episodes were supposed to be in Season 1. But because of the pandemic, they weren't ready in time. So they, you know, they... they carried them over to a season two and then started writing that out. And in fact, they had an episode already ready to go for Comic-Con today. And they showed attendees uh, the episode of Captain Carter versus the Hydra Stomper. Lot of Captain Carter. Captain Carter in uh, What If, That's gonna, she's gonna continue to be the star of this series because they introduced her. She was their idea and they sure did a great job with her. As I said, her action sequences on this show are incredible. And many of us were very let down to finally see her in live action in um, Multiverse of Madness. And you know what? Marvel Animation was also let down and they actually said at the, at the panel, our Captain Carter would have kicked Wanda's ass. And I think we all would agree. I mean, I don't know if she would have won, but I think she would have lasted a little longer, right? I guess Raimi and Waldron didn't watch What If either. Weird. 
So some of the storylines they teased, some of the episodes they teased for season two, and I wonder if they'll all be connected as season one was, because uh, you know, it's a multiverse series, uh, but a hella story, all the necro swords, because again, it's animation, they can do as much as they want. Odin versus the Mandarin, I'm very excited for this. Both not dead in this story, because uh, you know, I was so sad when Tony Leung died in Shang-Chi. I was like, why, he's so great. He br brought tears to my eyes. He really had a great performance, so I'm glad that they're gonna play with that character again. And versus Odin, that's gonna be great. Our dads are fighting. That's what Thor and Shang-Chi are gonna be like. But anyway, uh, and they're both such easygoing guys. So that's funny, but they both do not have easygoing dads. Uh, Captain Carter meets the Winter Soldier. Again, more Captain Carter. I wonder if it'll be Bucky and under what circumstances, because again, these are uh, Elseworld stories. Uh, oh no, I'm sorry. Elseworld is the DC term for it. What if stories. Uh, I love Elseworlds. Ah, another thing that DC loses to Marvel because Marvel did it first with the popular audience. All right, then anyway, Tony on Sakaar with Valkyrie and Hulk. Uh, by the way, I got a little tea for you. I found out that, you know, there was potentially going to be a romance for, Val uh, for Valkyrie in uh, Thor 4. I found out that it was probably going to be with Sif and that Sif had a lot more scenes and there was a very close bond bordering on maybe flirtation between the two of them in Thor 4. But those scenes, like much of the movie, half of that movie was cut, but uh, that's who it seemed like they were going to try and move Val into a relationship with. Well, most of us had guessed Captain Marvel, although there are rumors that Captain Marvel is in another relationship. Uh, and if you've seen those rumors, you know what I'm talking about. All right, so anyway. They can do any character they want on this show because they don't have to get the actors who portray them in the MCU. They've gotten pretty close approximations when they have to substitute someone, but I don't love fake Tony. I gotta tell you, he doesn't have the Robert Downey Jr. magic, but you know what? He's good enough. I'll take whatever Tony I can get. And I'm curious to see which original actors, you know, return for these storylines. Like, I don't think Kate Blanchett will return. So let's see who they get to voice Hela instead. Uh, some, but sometimes it really does work, so it's fine. I thought uh, Lake Bell was a great Black Widow, even though Scarlett Johansson, she fixed things up with Disney. So, well, you know, we'll see if, if Black Widow is in season two. And also, they're already working on a season three. So what if is here to stay? That makes me happy. I think it's a very good show. Didn't do as well as the other shows, though. Although I wonder where it ranks compared to Ms. Marvel which I believe is the least successful Disney Plus show to date, which is a real shame. That show doesn't deserve that. Uh, I believe it's partially because of airing on the same time as um, Obi-Wan. So I hope they stop doing that, doubling down. I, there are many days in the week, Disney Plus. There are many days in the week. Uh, I know you're like, well, someone can watch them on different days, but there's something special about drop day. It's important to get a lot of attention for the show. All right, then, then fall 2023, the X-Men return, X-Men 97. A continue, it's called that because it's a continuation of the Fox animated series from the 90s that made many people into X-Men fans. And I guess the thinking is maybe it'll make some more people into X-Men fans. But I don't know, you gotta be into this 90s sensibility. I don't know if this is a great idea. I mean, this was a very good animated series, but Feige's fixation on it, including the theme song, is beginning to worry me. I mean, the X-Men have come a very long way from these stories, and I don't think that I would want them to look like this in the MCU. But this is not the MCU, this show. So hopefully this X-Men 97 show scratches that itch for Feige, and he creates something that's, you know, I like that the MCU is comics accurate, but yet takes its own spin on things. But anyway, this show will pick up right where the original animated series left off, where Magneto leads the X-Men after Professor X went to space because he, he was sick and Lalandra of the Shi'ar had the only technology that could care for him. Oh yeah, who remembers that? I had to go on to Disney Plus where they have the original series now. I guess they want you to go watch it. I'm not doing that, that's too much. But um, it's like they hear a lot of episodes on there. But I went to that final episode and yeah, I got these screen grabs and I was like, oh, look at that, Chuck was sick, okay. Uh, I mean, we're so far ahead in the comics at this point, they have a daughter who currently runs the Shi'ar Empire. All right, she's the current ma uh, Majestrix. I think that's how you pronounce it. But anyway, uh, sure enough, Magneto was wearing his costume from the comics when he first led the X-Men. Those little flourishes really helped Feige and his comics accurate reputation. That's nice hair on Magneto, by the way. And I, if they're gonna have so much Magneto, I hope we have that rogue gambit love triangle. I'm always a big fan of that. You know, that's always from the Savage Land to, um, to you know, the, ex the Age of Apocalypse. I love that stuff. All right, so anyway. 
They have a couple of other X-Men that they preview. It seems like they're doing a focus on X-Force. Could Deadpool show up? He, I think, wasn't he introduced in the 90s, right? So this is his time. And then also uh, some villains you see here, like Callisto, who was in the original series. Uh, but I'm disappointed to see Emma Frost here still as a villain. Hopefully she's an anti-hero on this show. And I think that person on the far left is Val Cooper. Now that's not Julia Louis-Dreyfus's government Val. That's a different government Val. That's Valentina, like a, a Fontina Allegra or whatever. Uh, so a lot of Vals, I guess, in the U.S. government. All right, so anyway, so there's that show. Uh, I'll watch it. It's X-Men. But I hope that it is a little bit... I don't want it to be exactly like that animated series. Because, you know, again, you know, you want to... You wanna, uh, if you're trying to appeal to that fan base, you want to age up to, to, to fit with that. Uh, it's a little bit like the Harley Quinn show, which uh, has aged up for fans of the Batman the Animated Series, and I think works really well in that regard. All right, so then, 2024... Marvel Zombies. Oh, this is my favorite. It's going to be TVMA. Lots of blood and guts because it's a zombie show. Thank you very much. And look at this lineup. Wow. So you've got Yelena and Kate Bishop together again. Oh, I'm so excited. They look great. I love their friendship in Hawkeye, the Hawkeye series. It was my one of the best surprises about that show. Jimmy freaking Woo, still doing close-up magic, thank you very much. He looks a little bit like he's a Ghostbuster character. Uh, and next to him is Sean Chi. What a pair. I think they could, you know, I'd love to see them have a great friendship too. Uh, Sean Chi looks very on model. He looks fantastic. Uh, one of the Sean Chi death dealers. Uh, I wonder which one that is. Um, that's interesting. You know, they're like stormtroopers. We can just get another one in here if we need one. Red Guardian, oh, what a great surprise. And then some people are saying that that is uh, Ms. Marvel, which uh, that does not look like Ms. Marvel to me. That looks almost more like uh, Jubilee, but who of course has not been introduced in the MCU yet, but apparently it's Ms. Marvel. I love Kamala Khan. I'm very happy to see Kamala Khan whatever, wherever we can. Um, and I would prefer her to be on this type of team than on an X-Men team. Uh, so, although I did think that maybe it could be Jubilee. But anyway, uh, that, you know, I'm seeing reports that that's uh, Kamala Khan. And then though, look at these zombies. And they have their work cut out for them with some very powerful zombies to face off uh, against. Scarlet Witch is back. She was a great zombie. That's apparently Ghost with uh, very good uh, faded uh, you know, hair with the tips. I love that. A look at Hawkeye. I love that he's got all those arrows sticking out of him and stuff. That is a really great zombie design. Look, Okoye fell to the zombies. I'm so sad. No, but she's like, hey, I'm still on the show, baby. Good for you. Then Abomination, looking pretty interesting as a zombie. Captain Marvel. Oh my gosh, I don't know how they're going to defeat this, this group. And then half of a Captain America. Half of a Captain America still goes a long way, thank you very much. And then fascinatingly, Icarus. Icarus is a zombie, and I really liked uh, Richard Madden's performance. So, and I, you know, flying and eye beams. Thank you. I always love that. Uh, thank you know, just like Homelander. So it'll be cool to have him on the show. They should have some great action sequences on this show, and they don't have to hold back because, again, it's uh, TVMA. Uh, mature, for mature audiences. That's what that rating means if you're not familiar with it. Uh, Disney Plus is really embracing the parental controls that they added to the service. Because, you know, today, uh, Deadpool, Deadpool 2, 2, and Logan also joined uh, the streaming service. Then also there's word that there are a team of Black Widows running around this zombie apocalypse and also a biker gang of scrolls, which I need to see. 2024 is too far away. Uh, bring me this show right now. All right, then finally, also in 2024, Spider-Man Freshman Year. And I love that this has a different animation style. This looks like not only like the old 1960s style of the comics, but it reminds me of artists who capitalize on that. Not just Alex Ross, but Steve Rude. Are you, do you know Steve Rude's work? Oh, he doesn't work enough. I don't know if he's semi-retired or not these days, but he's so talented. I wish that he, you know, it always shocked me he didn't get more work. He drew my favorite world's finest story, speaking of DC, of Batman and Superman uh, and Joker and Lex. He's very talented. And so this reminds me a lot of that. Now this take, this is freshman year for uh, Tom Holland's uh, Peter Parker. So it's 
pre-Civil War, so he hasn't gotten his suit from uh, Iron Man yet. So he's got his old DIY suit. Now, while Tom Holland will not be voicing his character here, be careful, Tom! Don't pull a Margot Robbie and uh, voice your character. I mean, I don't think Tom Holland's that busy. I think he should do it. But anyway, Charlie Cox ain't too busy. Charlie Cox is like, I am back. He is back with a vengeance. So he is going to be voicing his character here because, you know, first he popped up in No Way Home. Uh, then, he, of course, I told you there are rumors he's going to have a cameo, at least in She-Hulk. He's on the new Echo show, and then he's getting his own series, which is currently in development. Oh, exciting stuff. Now, I guess because, you know, Peter Parker has no idea when he shows up as his lawyer in No Way Home, he will, uh, you know, Peter Parker will only meet the Daredevil version of the character. They're going to, some of this stuff doesn't quite add up, so it's weird. Uh, and I'll point this out to you as we go over the images that were revealed. So here are some of his pals. Very strong science theme, as you can see. Amadeus Cho, who we were just talking about when I talked about Hercules, who is now in the MCU uh, at the end of Thor 4. Uh, and I, so I think, uh, as you can see, here's Amadeus Cho already in the mix. Nico Minuro. That's exciting. A lot of Nico Minero fans. So I, I, anyone who shows up here is then viable to jump into live action at any time. And Harry Osborn. I don't know. I'm not quite sure if he's one of these characters, but I know that's Norman Osborn, as you can see in this other image from the show. First official MCU portrayal, because remember, he came from another universe in No Way Home. Uh, then, but speaking of No Way Home, why was Peter Parker so uh, so shocked by Doc Ock when he seems to have had his very own freshman year? So I don't know how they're going to explain this. Bunch of other classic Spider-Man villains there. Some of them, you know, with that classic look and some with uh, new twists. And then they're already planning the sophomore year sequel to this series. So these shows are all a while away, but I think when they do show up, it's going to be spectacular. So what do you think? What do you think of all this content? Which show do you think looks the most promising? What do you think of those Mar that Marvel Zombies lineup in particular? Uh, and what do you think of how far away it is? All right, so share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.